Hi, this is Danny Lewis from Music Pro Tutorials. And in this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes on this remix that I've done of Brandy's 2002 R&B classic, What About Us? Now this was a very difficult remix to do because I totally changed the vocal in terms of the phrasing and the tempo, of course. I'm gonna show you how I create some of the musical elements some of the processes used to get some of the textures. And we'll also take a look at the final master settings that I've got on here as well. Don't forget if you like this kind of thing to subscribe to the channel. But let's take a look, starting with the beats. Now the beats are really quite simple on this. It's drum samples loaded into a drum rack. I'm gonna play you the beats on their own in isolation now. Take a look at the mixer. I'm going to show you the samples. There's a kick. Really like the grainy texture to that one. Clap with some reverb on it and some EQ. That's a clap actually I didn't end up using. It's quite funny actually. I didn't realize I muted that, but. Uh, I think that's probably the right decision. I didn't want it to be too cluttered in terms of the beats. Hi hat. And there's another one that complements this. You hear that over here? Now, in terms of the programming, if we come back to that, this closed hat that you just heard is really quite heavily swung. So have a listen again. I'm not sure why the um, the visual isn't in time with what we're hearing. It could be down to my buffer size, but I don't want to change that at the moment. But anyway, you can hear that, that closed hat has a real kind of heavy, heavy swing to it. So that's what's going on with the beats. And that's it. That's all the programming is. It's very, very simple. Kick drum, clap, open hat, and then closed hat. Although I've got to say that open hat is very short, okay? The other thing that I've got layered on top is a shaker. So I'm gonna play you that here. Just gonna solo these two. In fact, let me just push command so I can get both soloed. Let's have a listen. Now that shaker is basically a loop. So I'll show you here. And I've put that on the same swing. You can actually see it down here in the groove template folder and you've got the swing 1665 okay that's what's going on with that so it's a, a groove template that i think works really well and i quantize everything to that in fact so when the other elements come in they've got a complementary groove now let me just take the solo off one of the things that you've probably noticed from my other videos is that i like to signify certain things are happening i've got some wind chimes here a variety of different wind chime samples. And I've got these to basically indicate things are happening. So can you see here that the beats are building up? We've got the shaker building up on top of the existing kind of kick, hi-hat, clap layer. And then we've got the wind chime signifying the bass lines coming in, okay? Okay, so the vocal is there. I'm gonna come back to that, but for the moment, what I wanna do is show you the bass. This is um, an instrument that I use a lot. So this is Native Instruments Razor. It's the Barnaby bass preset, which has got a real great deep warmth to it. And I made a, a, a very subtle adjustment. I think it was just the width I reduced that on there compared to the default preset. But let's have that in isolation so you can hear that. So after the bass, the next musical element is the electric piano. I'll keep the bass in there. So you can see here that this is the Scarby Mic 1. 
Now it's got some treatment on here that is really creating the texture. This is a real classic vibe. So let me just show you what's going on here. The two things that are contributing to the movement in the sound are the phaser and the auto wire. I'm gonna take the auto wire off. Let's bring it back. And that wobble is coming from the knob here. So that's the speed. And I manually set that, okay, to get that nice kind of rhythmic wobble. Just gonna show you actually what it sounds like if we take the phaser off. So it just shows you how important it is to have these effects to create movement on the sound. And that's got that real classic 90s kind of vibe. There's a nice layer on top of the electric piano. Just gonna show you what's going on with this. This is from the Contact Factory Library, the orchestral library, and this is Cello Ensemble. But what I did was I applied a filter onto that to create that movement. So it's got a real nice texture to it. So it's a low pass filter with an envelope on that. Coming up to another musical element here, this is an arpeggio. It's gonna bring up the instrument I used for that. And then we'll glad too. And this is really quite an electronic sounding patch. Vaguely harpsichordy. Not the sort of sound potentially you'd usually expect to work, but for me, it really added a real nice dimension. Come back again. to this second verse and I wanted something a bit different, okay? But I didn't want to basically add too much that was new. So I took the existing electric piano and I applied the auto filter on here. So I'll solo that, have a listen. So this is just to create a subtle shift for that second verse. Let me come back. And really, I guess you need to hear the beginning of that sequence from before just to really get a sense of that. So here we go for proper comparison. And then, so it's got that warmer vibe, okay? So that meant kind of sonically, it's a cue to say something is different. So this is the second verse. And then I've got some musical layers that are designed to really build it up to that second chorus. So to really get that sense of a crescendo, so there are two things that are going on here. There's the M1 patch universe, which is a real classic. And then there's uh, another string patch. This is contact, the string ensemble. I find I use these really regularly. Okay, this is the factory library, the orchestral library for contact is very, very good. So let me take you through that little musical movement. Um, let's get these all together and we'll get the piano, we'll get the bass and those string elements. And I'll bring some of the vocal in too. Here we go. Did I just detect a bad note there? Let me listen back. Sometimes 
you guys might know this, is that when you're right in the middle of the composition, even when you think you've got everything right and you've checked and checked and checked, there are some things that you can miss out. So let me just double check this, but I had my earphones off on one ear, I put them back, that transition could have made me think, oh, something's wrong, but I'm gonna listen again. No, it's okay. Yeah, what was that? Something changed on that string. <laughs> what is going on um that's just some random stuff that's happening at the moment i have no idea why oh wait a second do you know what it is i've just realized <laughs> i've got my push on and it's underneath the keyboard for some reason um i really haven't organized my gear tonight um so that was my <laughs> that was my hand rubbing on the pitch bend on the Ableton Push controller. So that was a real special moment, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to leave that alone now. Let's come back and I'll bring these musical elements in with the vocal again. Um, let me bring that back. And like I said, I am going to come back and explain some of the things that I did with this vocal. Okay, so that's working nicely, so it builds up. And then I've got like a, a kind of middle eight section. I'll show you what happens. So yeah, there is a new string element that's been coming in here. This is a very, very high string. And this is using um, Halion Sonic 3. I'm just waiting for this to load up. Um, SE3. And this is a great all-rounder. Um, I really love this plugin. It comes from Keybase and um, it's available in other um, doors and you can download it for free. Uh, I saw the other day. Um, so investigate that. I'm not sure it comes with all the libraries, mind you. Um, so I think they're using it as a kind of free player to download or to purchase libraries for. Um, but it's great. It's very versatile. And uh, the strings there, the ensemble strings, uh, fantastic patch. There we go. So this is to create some tension. <laughs> we're in this kind of big breakdown and it's going to build up everything's all going to come back and you may have noticed when you've been listening some things that are going on some little details um some effects here some noise sweeps um another noise sweep here that rises and falls so these are all there as transitional textures 
Um, nothing new there really. And um, I'm gonna focus on that vocal now, right? Let me have a look, right? So, so the original track, the tempo was, I think it was about 90 something BPM. It had a really quirky rhythm to it. And when I listened to that acapella, I thought the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow it down. I know that sounds crazy, but when you actually do a remix of uh, an R&B track, because you're usually going from slow tempo to fast, it can sound a bit silly rhythmically, it's too fast. So the phrasing, the syllables are too rapid. So the key to that is to basically do half the tempo instead. And then you're gonna get something that's gonna work. So I halved this, um, so it's not 120 BPM, it's 60 BPM, which is incredibly slow. And um, what that means is that actually, when you listen to it in isolation, you can really hear those grains from the stretching. So it's not the uh, most clean vocal, but when you've got the musical backing on top, everything sounds good. Well, at least it does to me anyway. And actually, I've put this track up on SoundCloud and I get some really nice reactions on it. So I think other people are thinking that too. I will put a link into the details down below so you can actually go and check that out for yourself as well. Okay, so remember, this isn't an official remix. This is a bootleg remix um, purely for the purpose of uh, enjoyment and also um, for you guys to see some of the uh, techniques here. So for educational purposes. Um, so let's have a listen. Let me bring that vocal back in isolation. So listen to how bad this is. What about all of the things that you said? What about all the promises that you made? And check out how much work I had to do, right? So this is a case of it didn't sit properly. I had to go in and work on so many syllables and re position them to make them work and that's making them work how I want them to work okay so I have chosen certain timings that I want to suit my music some purists won't like that idea but you know this is for me how I want to present that vocal Brandy if you're watching please <laughs> it'd be amazing if you'd like to re-vocal this for me that would be fantastic that's the holy grail right um, but anyway because Ultimately, you know, singers should perform to the music. You know, you might remember um, way back, if, you, if you're old enough, the Mariah Carey remixes that David Morales did. And quite often they were R&B tempo tracks. And then she came in to re-vocal specially for him. So he was lucky that he had a R&B singer performing at the house tempo. And not every R&B singer likes to perform at the house tempo. Certainly in my experience. So... This is really, really slow compared to the original phrasing. So for some people, they might hate it, but I think it really works with the backing. And I'll be honest with you, this took about maybe four separate evenings just focused on those vocals it did kind of drive me mad but i was like so determined to get it right so actually what i want to do is um just focus on that section that middle eight section here So can you see what I've done here is on this section, I've added a lot more of the ping pong delay. And that's deliberate because I wanted to create this disorientating kind of texture. I didn't want you to be able to hear exactly what was being said. Because it takes me back to those days of being, um, say, for example, a ruling at the Ministry of Sound in the main room, that heavy, heavy kind of vibe. And um, just it almost becomes quite intoxicating to get these trippy vocals flying around. So that was the aim here. So it's designed to be slightly disorientating and then dropping back to cleanliness over here. So this is where the delay is reduced and that adds extra drama to the section here. So I'll show you from about here. <laughs>
yeah, this is the chorus, the final chorus, it loops a bit. And then basically I'm breaking down the elements so DJ can mix the next track here. So very traditional outro. So it's probably a good time to come onto the master section. I'll show you my um, signal chain here. I picked up the non-linear summer from Waves in one of their bargain sales and I actually do like the sound of this. I know you guys have seen me using the Slate Digital Collection, I still love that. But because this was cheap, I thought I'd try it and I actually like the texture. So this is simulating the sound going through an old desk. Next up, solid bus compressor. So this is giving that SSL kind of bounce. And the reason why I used this one was because when I was doing a lot of the composition, I didn't have my dongle with me so I could use the Slate ones. After that, SSL G series. And this is another bargain recently. I've just got a little bit of bottom end pushed here. And also some highs lifting out of the top here. After that L2 is my final limiter. So that's it. I'll give you a link down below so you can go and check out the mix on SoundCloud. And if you have any questions, please give me a shout out in the comments. I'll see if I can get back. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, make sure you subscribe. Check out the back catalog as well. There's hundreds of videos across Cubase, Logic, Ableton, Reason, Bitwig, and Machina. Yeah.